Hello, postables all over the world. I'm Eric Mavius. I'm Kristen Booth, along with... I'm Crystal Lowe. And I'm Jeff Gustafson. Uh, it may have been a few years, but we are so excited to be back together with you and for you to watch our all-new original movie, Sign Seal Delivered, The Vows We Have Made. Uh, we have a couple of questions that Hallmark Movies and Mysteries sent our way, so let's get started. Okay. First question is... The Vows We Have Made is the 13th movie in the Sign Seal Delivered series, and the Postables are looking forward to Oliver and Shane's wedding day. Can you remind viewers where we left them and without giving away too many spoilers? Go, Jeff. <laughs> Me? Jamie, uh, you're on. Somebody answer. Oh, dear. Me. That was really horrible to throw him under the bus like that. No. Well, oh. we left off with uh, Norman and Rita's wedding, of course. Mm -hmm. Right. The ugly green tie, which meant what, Eric? Uh, it, that the O'Toole's would um, only wear the green tie when they had the intention of asking someone to marry them. That's right. And so then Shane saw the green tie at the wedding and... She said his sense of fashion is so horrible, I can't possibly say yes. <laughs> so that was it. That was the alt version. Well, uh, so Shane and Oliver are now engaged. I was inspired Rita. by being at Rita and Norman's wedding, I think, probably. I think so. And Rita and Norman are married. Mm -hmm. And the Postables uh, are embarking on a new event, so to speak, <laughs> in the new movie. Yeah, come on, buddy. It's all you. <laughs> What are we, and without giving away too many spoilers, I'll give away all the spoilers. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll for sure say the wrong thing. All the I'll, I'll give all the whole thing away. Once they get the started, things they publish seems to have given a lot away. That's part of the problem too, you know. Um, so there's a letter, uh, but the letter is not. It's a key to opening up an item that we have to locate in order to connect us to finding the person who's involved with this movie. Is that a fair way to go about this? I feel like that happens every time. It kind of does. Yeah. There's always the letter, and then we tr track yeah. down the, the would-be receiver or the, the the mailer. That's probably not what you say for that. Sender. Sender. Yeah. And we're nailing this. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are very good at this. Gold medal status yeah. right here. All right, let's... Why don't we, okay, so we've kind of established where the postables left off, right? Yeah. And we know that from from the ads that uh, Shane and Oliver are getting married, or at mm -hmm. least planning their wedding in the new one. And um, I think we should go to the next question, which is viewers will get to see Rita and Norman taking on some big decisions of their own as they look towards their future. Why do you think the postables will connect with your storyline? So this is a question for Jeff Ooh, I'll and Crystal. This. Oh, yeah. good. I'll answer this. Um, you know, I think this, the postables are really going to connect with the Norman and Rita storyline in this episode because, well, having a family and starting fresh in a marriage is really difficult. And uh, I don't think it's talked about very often. And I'm, I'm really excited mm -hmm. that we get to talk about it in this film. Um, you know, we, we think it's going to be all easy. You, you, you watch every princess movie, you get married, and then you live happily ever after. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's really difficult to have kids. Sometimes once you've had them, it's difficult. Um, and there are so many ways that you can start a family. And that's mm -hmm. what Norman and Reed are going to explore in this movie. And I think a lot of people will resonate with that. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. You don't? I think you nailed the explanation. <laughs> I think I think to that as well. I think um, that you you know, given uh, Norman and Rita's own sort of family dynamic that they're coming from, uh, I think I think the postables are going to be excited to see how they come together and what sort of family they start discussing and um, mm -hmm. you know, looking to develop. Mm -hmm. I think that, shall I, I ask think the that next question? It. I think there was something really great that you said, Crystal, and I think that's that everyone sort of has this assumption that once you get married, it's all like, woohoo, it's your honeymoon year and all that kind of stuff. But but statistically speaking, the first year of marriage can actually be the hardest. So I think it's really cool that Martha is 
uh, exploring what the first year of marriage and the challenges of that are in this film. Yeah, I mean, somebody might use your toothbrush. You <laughs> don't realize that until you move in with them, and that can be a deal breaker. Don't use my toothbrush. Um, <laughs> yes, Crystal, um, well, why don't you ask the next question? Great. It may have been a few years since you filmed the last Signs Heal Delivered movie, but how was it stepping back into your roles? Are there any fun behind the scenes stories that you can share? Mm. Hmm. Gigi? I'm trying to well, think. Me? What? <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it was you on the spot all the time. I mean, it was challenging for sure. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's a pretty nuanced series of relationships for the four of us. So having to kind of go back and, and look at where we were coming from. And, and I, I think Martha always does such a great job with the writing that, that, you know, there was a massive bridge there that she created for us all. Um, but I found it a bit challenging to be honest. Um, just because I, you know, Norman's pretty intricate. I don't know, our relationship with Rita, uh, Norman's relationship with Rita is pretty unique. And, um, you know, all of our relationships are just so unique. But yeah. Getting back into it took some time. I feel like it was, I do feel like because they had so much time had gone by since we sort of embodied these characters and were together as a, as a group or a family, as a cast, I think initially, I mean, I, for myself, I can only speak for myself. I, I had um, sort of that sort of tentative, like butterfly kind of like, oh, what's it going to be like kind of thing. And then I remember that first day in the table read at the Sutton Place Hotel and everyone walking in and getting a chance to see each other and hug and, and reconnect. It was, it was really incredible. Mm. Um, I mean, especially having gone through the world, having gone through what had it had gone through uh, in the last couple of years. So I, I really thought it was really interesting to hear us all say the lines on the page in the characters again. And I felt that within, you know, I don't know, first 10 pages, you it really just started to, you started to see those characters again. You started to see those relationships and the dynamic and, and, uh, it was, um, I don't know, that I, that read-through, that was really a magical experience. Oh, my God, I sound like Drew Barrymore. So magical. Um, mm -hmm. But I do. I think it was. I, I really enjoyed that table read. Uh, it, was a, it was great. Which yeah, I definitely felt like I was nervous to slip back into Rita, and I didn't know if I could. <laughs> it's like it's mm -hmm. been years. Do I know her mannerisms? Can I remember her? Uh, what is she like? And then, you know, it was like, it's like putting on, as soon as those glasses went on, I was like, oh, there she is. She's still there. So mm -hmm. there's definitely those nerves coming out which behind a, the scenes for sure. A good segue to the second part of the question, which uh, uh, every time or almost every time we come together to make one of these movies, uh, it seems like they've had to move the DLO. <laughs> I think that uh, we were all really excited, anticipating, worried, nervous, uh, all the above about how they were going to pull this off? How could they possibly try and pull that together and include another really great set piece, Norman's laboratory in, in the mix, and what mm -hmm. is going to get left behind and what gets invented for this movie? Which was, um, you know, I was shocked and excited when we finally got to walk in that space. It, uh, again, that was like I agree with you. It's uh, sort of like the other shoe dropping after the read through, seeing if the DLO felt like the DLO. For me, so yeah, yeah, I agree. It felt when we got to the DLO set, and it was it was familiar, and it was, I mean, yes, it's different, but it still had that DLO energy, if you will. Uh, I felt like I said to Martha, I said, I feel like we're home. Mm. And we had a new director this time, so that was really interesting too, right? Coming into that, um, just because Kevin Baird directed so many of them. So that was so, that was our norm. Um, and mm -hmm. that was definitely a worry for me. It's like, well, we all fall in step. You know, the director is very important and integral piece of the storytelling. Um, and, and it worked, uh, we were, he was sorely missed obviously, but we were able to pull it off. And, you know, those nerves coming in were scary and the, the, all the puzzle pieces fit together once we started, so it was good. Yeah, and how much LL had to pull off. I mean, it was obviously mm -hmm. a complex script, but 
we had one less day to do it on top of everything else and jumping yeah, into the yeah. family the way she did was really remarkable i think mm -hmm. all so right next question who wants to read this one That's, yeah. this one's for us so Ooh. eric do you want to read that one for crystal sure, and jeff yeah. um question for crystal and jeff <laughs> rita and norman make such a great team with a potential new home and starting a family on their minds we'd love to know What's their secret to overcoming challenges and working together? Mm. Oh, that's funny. It's the same question because, you know, it's a challenge working with Jeff all the time. It's just, it's really <laughs> tough. Yeah. Um, but you guys are strangers, how, too. I so. mastered it. Yeah, too. barely know each other. Put up with it. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I, I never feel like there's any challenge in terms of, like, working with Jeff because it is, it, we could not be more connected when we're together you know it's easy it doesn't for me it never feels like i don't know i could not see jeff for 10 years and it would feel like i'd just seen him five minutes ago and that, yeah. that could happen now so it's, yeah. there's not my, a huge amount of challenge my irritating personality is like that uh yeah i love it though it's just like it reminds me of home like oh yeah that's what i left that's the yeah that's i agree the, well it I, helps that i've known crystal for like what 20 years <laughs> like that's, that that makes it easy i'm for, just for reading. anybody who doesn't know you guys went to high school you were in the same yes. high school right just a yeah. couple sort of grades. sort of i'm well, significantly yeah. older yeah way uh, way way older. yeah uh, <laughs> jeff knew me when i used to wear crop tops and i did mm -hmm. at one point in my life and um size men's 40 jeans yeah you know, that was uh, that was my 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 style when I, in the 90s and i've known him since then so we know someone that long and didn't you line your lips with with um brown eyeliner oh yeah mm. um i loved everything about the 90s I yeah you still really ticked a lot of boxes she um <laughs> was the total package hey i'm just rereading this question and i'm wondering if if um another way to answer this is how did rita and norman uh yes. overcome challenges and 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 work together uh, especially with us you know having to like what we talked about earlier, Crystal, the, yeah. you know, how do we look at a family? What does a family mean to us? How are we, how does that, how do we shape that for ourselves? Um, I don't know. I'd say communication, like Norman and Rita seem to really pride themselves on being super honest with each other. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's the beauty of their relationship too, right? They don't, they're not afraid to open up to one another. There is zero judgment between them. Yeah. And they both are friends for so long. They know each other so well. Um, they knew who they were marrying and they wanted to mm. marry that person. And I think that's what's really beautiful about their marriage. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. It's odd how much it mirrors our relationship. <laughs> Knowing it's been exactly. forever, <laughs> getting into this together, grinding it out day after day. <laughs> um, you know, the kids. Yeah. I mean, you and I aren't going to have kids probably, but maybe Norman and Rita. Nobody ever knows what the future holds. I don't, you know. You never okay. Let's put a pin. Let's put a pin in that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask this one because it's for Eric and Kristen. Do you All right. See, her, viewers will get to see Oliver open up to Shane and show more of a vulnerable side. Oh, this is exciting! As they're planning their wedding, if you had a chance to give any of to give your characters any advice as they take the next step into it, what would it be? So, I guess Eric and Kristen, what would you give? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give Shane and Oliver? Eric? Uh, well, I guess that sort of mirrors the journey that Martha has has Oliver going on in this. Uh, it's about, it's the theme of letting go. You know, all, so much of Oliver is structured and it's about um, being in control and it's about having this great um, put together a facade, but the extent to which Oliver wants to hang on to that, how much of that is really who he is, or how much of that is a coping mechanism, I think is in learning how to um, how to look at oneself in an honest way, keep what works, and let go of what doesn't, as in, you know, the great advice that Oliver gets from those closest to him without giving anything away in the course of this movie is mm. um uh, is really invigorating and freeing for him um, and able to uh, being able to see what's right in front of his nose 
having not had people so close to him to give him perspective that he wouldn't be able to have the guts to do that. So uh, besides just loosening up Oliver, um, learning how to let go and not hold the sins of the past against the, uh, the future that's uh, ahead. Mm -hmm. hmm. Lucy, what about you? Well, you I think Shane. I think Shane dealt with the challenges she was faced with really well, actually. So I don't know that I would. I mean, I think, I think, well, I'm talking about Shane here, not myself. I think, I think, no, I really, truly think that there were some really, we get to see that Shane has really learned and evolved uh, a lot over the seasons of this show. And that I think in the past, in situations where she wasn't a hundred percent sure what was happening with Oliver, she wouldn't necessarily confront that head on and say, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? Why are you acting this way? Uh, what's bothering you? What do, what do we need to talk about? What do we need to work on? I think in the past, she would have tried to either ignore it or I don't know, distract herself with other things. And then there would be this miscommunication between the two of them and things wouldn't go uh, as well as they maybe could between them. And so this time, I think she's really learned to, to really sort of be open to communicate and to ask those tough questions, even if she's not sure she wants to hear the answer. And I, and I, I remember having a moment being like, I am really proud of Shane for, for how well she's doing all of this. Because she really did. She really, she really like has changed and I am proud mm -hmm. of her. That's cool. Yeah. Jeff, you want to read the next question? Okay, I'm ready. Number six. Wait, it's number six, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, yes. Not only is there going to be a beautiful wedding, but the Postables do what they do best and help a young boy with leukemia find his lost friend. Are there, only, are there any scenes that you can't wait for the viewers to watch? Hmm. But don't give anything away. <laughs> right? Uh, yes. All of them. Yeah. All the scenes. Every single any, one. Any scene where I get to talk. <laughs> you know, I, I... I think the, the final <laughs> moment, but we can't tell anybody what that is, but there is, you know, there is definitely a, a final moment, and that's all I'll say, where you better have tissues close by because, you know, it just... I think this whole storyline really incorporates a lot of people that have been essential um, in our lives recently that mm -hmm. I think we all need to thank. And I don't think they get enough praise for all the work that they do. I know we try, but like in the last two years, it's been very clear and obvious that some people are invaluable to our society and they really mm -hmm. step up. Um, mm -hmm. So I think, you know, uh, when you see some of these scenes, you're going to be reminded of how, how amazing it is to put yourself uh, second over others to sacrifice so much for your job or just to help other people. The community. Think, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be the, um, and I'm dying for people to, you know, meet uh, his mom, the little boy's mom, because she's super, you know, women are uh, incredible when they step up, what they can accomplish and what they can do. And I think that's really exciting about this. We get to see that too. A very, yeah, a very strong female character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and a diverse, you know, someone um, in the BIPOC community. And I think that's yeah. one of the things that I love about our show. And it's always been, you know, we've always been open and had diverse cast. And it's one of the things that I'm most proud about it that on Hallmark that our show has been like that from the beginning and that that's due to Martha she is an incredible incredible woman who who really she just is so worldly she's she, she doesn't think about oh okay well this you know we're just thinking about you know an audience in North America or we're just no it's a it's a worldview that she has and I love that mm -hmm. It's just nice that Martha, I mean, going way back to um, 
Oh, what is the show? Touched by an angel. Touched um, by an angel. But she wasn't, you know, inclusive when it wasn't trendy or in the the current zeitgeist. Uh, yeah. She's always been that way, and you know, obviously, there's been a transition going on at the Hallmark, trying to be more conscious of that. But Martha, it's mm -hmm. great that we can not so much stay the course, but Martha can be true to what's important to her, and for us to all be a part of that. Um, yeah, and with we, that, we in, get to benefit. With that in mind, I think uh, without giving it away. I think it's one of the coolest um, endings to a movie she's written because if I, you know, if you go back and look at it, it's almost as if she's written this as an ellipse where there's, you can, where you finish is where you start. It's sort of mm. the new beginning where we all are jumping off into this new life, um, starting our adventures all over again and from a new perspective, you know, because mm -hmm. of the, the changes we, our characters have gone through. And I, and I, you know, I just have to, again, say kudos to her because right, I can't imagine the challenge of writing these new movies after kind of having to sort of write, not really knowing what's next for these characters and whether they will continue on and, or whether they won't and, or that the, the audience will get to see them continue on. And, and uh, she's so masterful that each time that she's been ch challenged with this she's met it and risen above it you know and i think i totally agree with you eric this one especially i the ending is just so hopeful and mm -hmm. and it really just opens the door to so much more and i really i really i hope we get to see that i really do fingers crossed all of them <laughs> that's how it works right I got to do it too. I did it. <laughs> all right. So um, let me take this. To wrap up our live chat and to get to know you all a little better, we have a rapid fire game of who's mostly, who's most likely to be inspired by Sign Sealed Delivered, the vows we've made. Who's most likely to be inspired? Do they, I think they mean us, oh, right? I think yes. no. no, which one of these? Who's yeah. most likely to? Do these things. And it's inspired uh, by Sign Sealed Delivery. Right. Like of the wedding. four of us. Who would plan their own wedding? Probably Shane. Chris. Oh, you mean wow. characters or, or actors? Oh, no. Oh, really? Oh, no. I don't know. My, uh, we have a oh, no. Oh, I think us. it's, it's got to be us as actors, us, right? Sorry, Doi. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Us as actors. We're, we've been, I've been, uh, uh, to the, this just in, both. Both the actors. Both. Oh, that. both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, definitely Crystal. Are we on number one? Plan their own wedding. Yes. Crystal. Crystal for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I actually did plan my own wedding, and I yeah. planned lots of other people's weddings as well. So, yeah. And yes, as a character, Shane. I would say Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Build a new house, Eric. Eric. Yes. <laughs> Eric. Uh, Oliver. characters, Oliver, no, I can't see Oliver building a house. Well, Joe, Joe would build Joe! a house. Joe! Joe? Yes. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and Joe and also uh, Ramon, because who knows? Because he just Ramon's can do. He would, be, he would yeah. build like a yurt or something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, Oliver can only do certain woodworking, but not build a house. He can. Yeah. He can build a swing. He can hang a swing. Okay. That's true. But Joe yeah. can. The shingling. And I don't, I don't know. Okay, have a have a destination wedding. Mm, Jeff Gustafson. Yes. <laughs> ah, and you did. Wedding. Yeah. Um, I would I would definitely say Ramon too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Although I don't if know he that was... Ramon would ever really get married, but maybe if he did. Possibly if he met the right person. Yeah. No. Yeah. If that person was was speaking truth into his heart. That's true. Perhaps. And bullfighting. So good. So good. Rich. Sweet. Dance with friends at a reception? Uh, That's me. All of us. Yeah. yeah I'm across I'm the board, dance. both characters and actors. Oh, you know Rita's gonna dance. I mean, I like to boogie. Like Jeff right? Gustafson will get down. I will also uh, get down. Would Norman Norman might be, be like maybe in a group like a like a sock hop in, in high school, you know, like maybe, maybe then he would dance with friends as long as it wasn't just by himself. I mean, if he saw Ramon dancing with Rita again, that might light a fire and he might yeah. run out real quick. Yeah. He, he might, 
you know, you might do the worm like onto the dance floor and yeah. uh, <laughs> really wow Rita with some <laughs> never before That's seen dance you. moves. Have you seen Rita dance? That was well, me. I'd be high kicking all my way to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was a high kick, but really it was just like a kick. <laughs> Crystal knows that if I saw Rita dancing at an event, I would run the other way. <laughs> it's too embarrassing, huh? And Jeff would walk <laughs> over and point and laugh. Yeah, Crystal I would probably do that. Not, <laughs> Crystal doesn't like embarrassing things. I, on the other hand, love embarrassment. For myself, for anybody, I love it. I revel in it. It's enjoyable. I love looking like an idiot, if it's possible. Okay. Uh, I find to be embarrassed myself, but I don't like be embarrassed for others that makes me very uncomfortable <laughs> oh no i cheer for them i'm like yes yes more more mm. do it do it yeah it's a I'm... it's a supportive cheering renovate <laughs> a house the next one. Renov renovate a yeah, who's gonna renovate a house eric, eric. Boothy? i would. would yeah i would i certainly had practice at it if i had the money <laughs> i've renovated my own i, re I, renovated, I renovated this restaurant. apartment i can make all of us yeah we're so handsome that's not the word. What is no, the word? not the word. Hand, handy. Handy. Handy with a handy. Y. Not, not handsy. I did that not on handsy. another thing that said handsy instead of handy. <laughs> Who would write their own vows? <laughs> Oliver and Shane. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Norman and Rita. Norman yeah. and Rita. My goodness. All I wrote I wrote our own vow on my husband and my, well, we wrote our own vows. I wrote my own vows too. I wrote my vow. Me too. Plural. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote my vows, but then I oh, I wrote our speech because Michael didn't even know he had to say anything. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I covered. I, I figured he didn't. I, it was I was already good. Jeff, take it. Go ahead. That's you. Uh, hey, <laughs> thank you for joining us. We can't wait for you to watch the premiere of our new movie, Sign Sealed Delivered: The Vows We have Made. Uh, tune in for Sign Seal Delivered, The Vows. Oh, good grief. The, tune in. Somebody else want to take this part? Yeah, someone else do it. Tune in for Sign Seal Delivered, The Vows We Have Made on Sunday, October 17th at 9 p.m., 8 p.m. Central, only on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Tweet along while you watch using hashtag postables and hashtag The Vows We Made. And I can only speak for myself, well, and Crystal, because we're besties. But uh, we'll be tweeting along with you, so we're very excited. Eric, Jeff, will you be tweeting, live tweeting? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Totally All tweeting. four postables yeah. will be live tweeting with the fans on October 17th. Can't wait to see you all. Woohoo! Hashtag postables Bye. and the vows we made.